This tutorial goes along with Excel Project 2. Go ahead and begin by opening, opening Microsoft Excel. And if we glance at the instructions, it tells us that we're going to use columns A through G and reminds us of our formatting for our headings and our column headings. Um, it says to use two rows for our column headings, so we'll have to be careful when we're putting those in. We're going to learn how to format to currency, how to add uh, or format to percentages, uh, the birth dates we want to show only the month and the day, so we'll have to do a special format for that. We'll also learn how to insert a new row, add some fill color, um, change the alignments, adjust our column widths, and then of course we'll do our spell check. All right, so let's start by adding everything into our spreadsheet. In cell A1, turn your cap lock on and key in your main heading student information. There's no subheading on this one, so row two will be left blank. We'll skip down to row three. Now on our column headings, be really careful that you get the information in the correct location. So in A3 we want last, and in A4 we want name. In B3 first, B4 name, and then in column C we don't have a top row, so we're just going to go to C4 and do birthplace. In the D column we're going to go to D3 and put in birth. D4 we'll put in date. And then in column E we only have the word age so it'll go in A A4 or sorry E4. And then in column F we have school in F3 and fees in F4. And last column G class in G3 and rank in G4. Now that we have our column headings, we can go ahead and key the information that goes underneath each column heading. Now when I get to column D and I key in the dates, notice that it automatically changed the date format. So I'm going to highlight those and then go to my home tab into the numbers group and we're going to click on the launcher in the bottom corner. Then make sure you're on the number tab and we want to go to the date category and as you look down the list you should see a date that allows you to have just the month and the day, no year included. So it's the third one down here on my computer. Then we'll click on OK and those date formats look better. OK, then you can put in your ages and then your fees and ranks. When you're doing the fees, just type in the whole number, school fees. Um, so I did 50. I don't need to type in the point zero zero. The computer's going to do that for me. Then I can come back and highlight those numbers. And up in the number group, I'm going to come to the drop down next to general, and I'm going to choose currency. We don't want to use accounting, we want to use currency. Now in the number group there is this button with a dollar sign, but if I hold my mouse over it, the quick tip tells me that it's accounting format, not currency format. So we do have to go to this drop down here, make sure you choose currency. Now for your class ranks, they are decimals. Be sure you key them in as a decimal. And then afterwards we're going to highlight those and then come up to our number format and we're going to change them to percentage. So I'm going to click on the little percent symbol and then make sure that there are no decimal places showing. If I did have a couple decimal places like this, I can remove them by coming here to this decrease decimal button and clicking it until the decimals are gone. All right, now that we have our information keyed in, we'll start at the top, click in A1, and we'll format our main heading to bold, 15 point, and then we need to merge and center it across our whole table. The last bit of information we have is keyed in column G, so I'm going to highlight A1 to G1, then come up the, to the alignment group and click on merge and center. Then for my column headings, they are on rows three and four. I'm going to highlight both rows and I'm going to turn on centering, just a regular center. I don't want both rows underlined though. So after I get them both centered, I'm going to click only on row four, then turn on the underline. Double check yours, make sure it's the same as mine. Both rows 
3 and 4 are centered, but only row 4 has the underline applied. Now we're going to go ahead and double check that all of our formatting is correct. Um, it says for our school fees column, that should be currency with two decimal places. Our class rank should be percentage with no decimal places. Our birth date should show the month and the day only. So we're good there. Uh, next it tells us to insert a new row directly below the main heading and put in a subheading. So I'm going to click on the row underneath our main heading, row 2, and I'm going to go up to my cells group, home tab cells group, and I have an insert button. There is a drop down. If you choose the drop down you can do specific things. If I just want to add a row, I don't click on the drop down, I click on the button above. There's my row. Now this row has formatting applied that matches my main heading. I'm going to click on this little paintbrush here that lets us choose our formatting options and we're going to say that we want it formatted the same as below instead of above and that makes it back to our Calibri 11. Then I'll click in A2 and type in that subheading and it says we want it to say period A2. Now this may not necessarily be your class period, but it is the period that is showing for this teacher um, who's typing up the spreadsheet or who the spreadsheet is for. Now we do need to merge and center this, so I'm going to highlight A2 through G2. Click on the Merge and Center button. All right, we're on step seven now, which tells us to apply a fill color to rows one through five. So we're going to highlight A1 through G5, which is our main headings, subheadings, and column headings. All of our headings are going to have the same type of formatting. To do the fill, we're going to go to the font group, and there's a little paint bucket here with a drop down. We're going to click on the drop down, and we're giving, given theme color families. We want to choose one family to do the coloring for our whole spreadsheet. So let's say I want to use our olive green family. You're going to come down about the third one down. We, we don't want to go too dark or our text isn't visible. So right in the middle is where we want to be. So I'm going to choose my accent with a 40%, um, lighter 40%. Then it says to apply a complementary fill color to the rest of our spreadsheet. So I'm highlighting A6 through G10. Go back to your fill drop down. You want to go to the exact same color family but do two shades lighter. That way the two colors match and are complementary to each other. Now we just have to do our alignments. Um, it says the information in columns A through C. So I'm going to highlight A6 through C6. Should be left aligned. I think those already are but we'll just double check. And then the columns D, F, and G should be right aligned. So I'm going to highlight column D, then hold down your control key on your keyboard, and you can highlight columns F and G, and that allows us to skip column E. So columns D, F, and G are going to be right aligned. So we'll come up and click on the right align button. And then column E, which is our age column, we're going to turn on the centering. Now we're ready to adjust our column widths. To do that, we go to the line between the A and the B. We get the two-headed arrow, double-click, go to the line between B and C, C and D, D and E, E and F, F and G, and then G and H to adjust each of those columns. Now we're ready to run a spell check. I'm going to do a control home to get to the top of my document. And then the keyboard shortcut for spell check is F7. Going to press F7. Uh, make sure you fix any errors that you run across. We're going to center horizontally and vertically. We did this last time, but just as a reminder, we go to the Page Layout tab. We go to the Page Setup group and click the Launcher. Then we go to the Margins tab. And then down in the bottom left-hand corner, we put a check mark by horizontally and a check mark by vertically and click on OK. Next, we'll add a header, go to Insert, down to the text group, header and footer. In the left section, you'll type your name. In the center, you'll type your class period. And at the right, we want the file name to show 
So we come here to our he header and footer elements group and click on the file name button. Uh, I like to change my view back to normal view after I do my header, so I'm going to click down below back in cell A1, go to my view tab, and in the workbook views group I'm going to choose normal, so I hide that header. Now we're ready to save this, so go to file and save as, change to your student drive, Go into your computer tech folder, into your Excel folder, and this is going to be named Project 2. Now, before you submit this, we're going to go to File and Print so we can see a print preview. Make sure your header is showing across the top. Make sure it's definitely showing in the center and that your shading is all correct. If it looks good, we're going to go up to the File tab and down to Save and Send. Go to Create PDF XPS Document, and then click on Create PDF. You can leave the name as Project 2, click on Publish, and when that shows on your screen, you can go ahead and close it, and now you're ready to upload your document to Canvas.